Hey there, my name is Terry Martin, and I'd like to welcome you to this new mini course that I've put together to learn about the Spring Framework, specifically by building a simple web application. This mini course is actually the final chapter of my much larger course teaching the fundamentals of Java. So if you have any interest in learning Java in general, or you want to start a new career as a professional software developer, check out the link in the description below. Now in this mini course, we'll be building what is called a fully functional CRUD application. CRUD is an acronym that stands for Create, Read, Update, and Delete. And so this application that we will build will allow us to create records that can do all of those functions. This mini course will actually be over 10 hours long, and it'll be comprised of quite a number of videos. So make sure you don't miss any of them as I release them. And with that, let's get started. Guess what? You have finally reached the final section of this course. Congratulations if you've made it this far. We're almost done. Now I think this section will likely be the most fun for the majority of you because we will finally be building a full application with a proper graphical user interface. And that'll be a web application that we will be building in this entire section, okay? So we'll be using what is arguably the most popular framework for doing this type of work, which is called the Spring Framework. So in this intro, I just want to let you know a little bit about the Spring Framework and let you know a little more about what we're going to be building and how we'll be using it and what to expect. So the Spring Framework is the most popular framework used by Java developers, especially in the enterprise space. And enterprise really just means large corporation for the most part. So it is the most popular add-on framework for enterprise Java development when it comes to building web applications, web services, microservices, and applications of that sort. And I would say the reason that it has become so popular is because it's been around nearly 20 years as of the time of this recording. It was first released back in 2002, and it's been going strong ever since. And it made it significantly easier to write so-called enterprise level applications than any of the technologies that existed before then. And it's done a great job of keeping enterprise Java development relatively easy ever since. Now there was at least one major competitor that existed, I consider it a competitor at least, that existed before the Spring Framework came out. And there have been some that have come out since then, but the Spring Framework has definitely become the de facto standard among corporations, at least in the US. I have not worked as a Java developer in other parts of the world, but I'm guessing it's pretty much the standard everywhere for corporate enterprise development. So let's talk a little bit more about what is it actually. So the Spring Framework is a collection of sub projects, okay? And I'm actually on the Spring Framework's website right here, which is spring.io. That's how you can get to it, spring.io. Okay, and so right here on the main page, you can even get a sense of what you can use the Spring Framework for. Microservices, reactive applications, cloud applications, web apps, and a lot of other things too, okay? So then we can even dig into some of the projects here and you can see a few of the main ones, Spring Boot, Framework, Cloud, et cetera, et cetera. And then there's even more. If I click on this and you can scroll through here, there are plenty that are actively in development right now. And then even more that may not actively be under development at this time. So it's a very productive framework where they're really creating a lot of functionality. So let me just tell you a little bit about a few of these modules, especially the ones that we're going to be using primarily in this section, okay? We'll be using Spring Boot. I will explain a little bit more about that later when we start getting into it. We'll be using obviously the core Spring framework. So I would say this represents kind of the original thing that the Spring Framework was, and that's why it still gets the name Spring Framework. And then a lot of these other sub projects kind of sprung out of the Spring Framework, and so they kind of formalized them into their own projects. But this one right here was pretty much the original thing that was called the Spring Framework. It will be a little difficult for me to explain 
much of what it does without showing you. So I'm going to hold off on that for right now. Spring data is a great one though. So in our last section, we spent the entire section learning how to write Java code that interacts with a database using the JDBC framework. So Spring Data is a framework that makes it way easier than what we did in the last section to write code that works with a lot of different kinds of databases and database technology. So in the last section, we used JDBC to work with one particular database, which is H2, and H2 is a relational database, okay? But there are other types of databases besides relational databases. And the Spring Data Framework can enable us to interact with lots of different kinds besides just relational or object databases. You can interact with pretty much all of the most popular types of databases there are and write very, very little code in many cases to have a lot of functionality. So the Spring Data project is kind of magical in my opinion. It, it just does amazing things. But what we did in that last section on JDBC and databases will give you deeper insight into some of the magic that's happening with Spring Data, okay? And then if we dig into the Spring Framework itself, we will see that one of the breakout projects or sub-projects of the Spring Framework is Spring MVC, and we will be making heavy use of this framework. So Spring MVC is the sub-framework for building both web applications and web services. So one way of thinking of a web application is basically it's a type of website, but it's frequently one that is intended to be more interactive, like in both directions. So if you think of a website like CNN or a web news website, you're mostly just consuming content from the website and you don't do a whole lot of interacting with it. But in many web applications, maybe not all, but in many of them, you may be doing various forms of entering lots of data and consuming lots of data back out of that website. And when we make websites of that type, especially when they're purpose-built within a corporation or something, something like that, they're usually referred to as web applications. A few examples that most people might be familiar with would be Google Docs, where they've implemented basically competing applications to Microsoft Office. So you've got the ability to make spreadsheets and type documents and do slide deck presentations, those kinds of things. And then even Microsoft has their own Microsoft Office implementation in the web as well. So those are fully functional web applications on steroids. Now, usually most of the typical types of web applications that you'll be building in the Java enterprise space won't be nearly as advanced as Microsoft Office running in a browser, but it could be. But my point here is that those are applications where you're very much interacting and creating content within the browser rather than just consuming it. So if I had to summarize what the Spring Framework really is, I would just say it's a collection of APIs, frameworks, projects that make it easier to develop enterprise applications in Java. Now, let me also remind you, this section is only meant to be an introduction to the Spring Framework. The Spring Framework is massive, okay? Like truly, I mean, you can see right here, there are many, many modules of the Spring Framework. And there are many, many books that focus just on one of these modules, okay? Let alone the whole entire thing. So we won't be going really, really deeply into all of the aspects of the, of the Spring Framework. I will offer additional courses in the future Future that will go into those topics in more depth. My purpose in this section is to primarily accomplish two things. First off, I want you to be able to get a sense for how we can put a lot of what you've learned throughout this course all together to build something more realistic, okay? And there's nothing like building a fully functional web application where you can actually interact and see things visually instead of having to work on the command line. Secondly, I want to cover some of the most common use cases that a lot of enterprise Java developers will encounter when making basic web applications. Just as we implemented a CRUD application in the last section from the databases perspective, in this section, we'll be creating an even more fully functional CRUD application 
in the web browser, okay? And we will cover enough common cases that many of you will be able to take what we are going to learn in this section and kind of treat the techniques and the code that we'll be implementing here as a template for how to make basic CRUD applications. So we will be solving a number of problems that you are very, very likely to encounter as a professional developer without you having to learn the entire Spring framework. So even if you don't go any further with me with any of my future courses, you will leave this course with an a very particular set of skills that will enable you to be able to build useful applications immediately. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this content and you'd like to help me out, there are several ways you could do that. First, you can always click the like and subscribe. That'll help me out a lot. Additionally, another way you can help me out is to check the link in the description below. That'll link you to my website where you can find additional courses. And finally, for those of you who might be interested in starting a new career as a professional software developer, I offer a free PDF guide that will detail exactly how you can get started in this field with no college degree and no prior experience. All you need to do is click on the link in the description below. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.